Look, it's probably. Hey. Hey, you. Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a super slim, sleek card holder. Let's get started. So once you have purchased and downloaded your patterns, you're going to want to print them off. Now they are scaled for A4 printing and you want to make sure that the scale is set to 100%. Once you have printed off your patterns, roughly cut them out and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually reinforce them with some card and that's going to make it so that you can use it more than once. Once you've done reinforcing your patterns, you can then cut them out accurately. Now with these patterns, there are a few different combinations that you can choose from, and they are all described in the information pack that comes with the patterns. So once you've got your patterns out and you decided which design you're gonna do, you're gonna grab your leather and start to roughly cut out your patterns on the leather. Now, depending on which layout you choose, you're gonna either want to have two T-slots or four T slots. But again, all that is in the information pack with the patterns. So when accurately cutting the patterns that are gonna have the turned edge, what I like to do is draw the top edge and cut that straight. And then I will draw on the fold edge as well. And again, noting that I am roughly cutting these out. We can now start to reinforce them and all the information about the materials used for that is in the pattern packs along with what leather i have used and the thickness of that when we reinforce it we're going to reinforce up to that turn line and then down the rest of our leather now when it comes to the backing piece we're going to reinforce two of them and then leave the two lining pieces without a reinforcement on. We can then put them to one side and we're gonna do some work on our pockets. So what we need to do before we can make that folded edge is we need to skive along the very edge of that down to nothing. Now you wanna do this very carefully and we're literally just gonna take off the very edge down to nothing and that's just gonna reduce that thickness and make it so there's no bump there when we stick the back of that turn edge down. Now, once you have that edge sky, what you can do is with the patterns, you can then redraw where the fold over is going to finish. So what I do is I'll hold that up to the edge of the pattern and then mark that line. And I'll draw the line in with a ruler. You can then glue up to where your folded edge needs to be. And then once that goes tacky, you can then start to fold that over. So I have the ruler on here where I know where that folded edge needs to finish. So I've got a bit of a guide to aim for. We're just going to slowly start turning that edge over, making sure it hits our ruler. So it's going to be nice and even along the whole edge. And once you've got that glued down, you can then tap it with a hammer. Now what we're going to do is to accurately cut the pieces out. So we're going to hold our pattern on just below where that turn edge finishes on the pattern, because that's how long our pocket needs to be. Then we're going to draw around it and cut this out.
So we just need to do a little bit more work to our T-slots before they're ready to stitch in. So as you can see on the pattern, we have a skive area. And what we're going to do is carefully skive across the bottom and along the two sides down to nothing. Now, this can be a bit tricky because we have the reinforcement fabric and the adhesive on there. So just be careful and take this nice and slow. So the knife has a tendency to get a bit gummed up and stuck in the adhesive especially with the fabric that i'm using the self-adhesive stuff so you just need to take this nice and slowly so now our two t-slots are ready we can cut out the backing pieces so we're only going to cut the two that were lined earlier and we're going to accurately cut these out Now the pattern pack comes with some alignment tools so you need to pick the one which is the one for you and the design that you are making and then just cut the ends of the T for the top slot and then you can use that to help guide you when you are marking on where the top of that T slot needs to be on your backing. So as you can see the line is faintly here it is a bit hard to see on this textured hide but the line is there and once we've done that we can then glue both our backing and our t-slot and get that stuck in place And again, when it comes to actually sticking the T-slot onto the case, we can use our alignment guide. So here you can see I've got my alignment guide upside down so I can get a nice straight edge for my pocket to sit up next to. And once you've glued that in, you can then flip that around just to double check that it is in the right place. Once you're happy with that, we can then go ahead and start to stitch mark this in. So on the T-slot pattern, there is a green line which you need to transfer to your T-slot and you can then draw that line with a pen. And we're going to stitch mark all the way along that line and you can stitch mark all the way through. So the stitch mark I'm using here is a 3.38 millimetre iron and that is quite small for this. So what I'm going to do when it comes to stitching is I'm actually going to miss out every other hole and I'll have long stitches on this part of my wallet. We're not going to see it, so it doesn't matter. And it's going to make stitching in a bit faster and it's going to be a bit more secure because we're going to have the longer stitches. And once your T-slots are stitched in place, you can then use a hammer and just tap the stitches nice and flat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to glue on the front pocket. So now we have the front of our wallet assembled. What we're going to do is we're going to glue on the lining for these.
Now, once you have glued your backing on, we can then start to transfer some marks onto our wallet. So we're going to transfer all the four corners of both the green stitch line and the red trim line onto our wallet. And that's just going to make it easier a bit later on. What we're going to do next is then draw a line between these points and we're just going to do the innermost stitch line to start with. Now, as you can see, I've gone all the way around on one and across the top and then down one of the short sides on the other. So because what we're going to do is now we're going to stitch mark these as a pair, but one of them is going to be the top side. So that's why I have gone around all of the edges. We can then stitch mark all the way through. And again here, I am using my 3.38 millimetre iron. Once you've done stitch marking, you can then use some crepe rubber and just rub out that silver line that we put on because this is easier to do now than once we have finished stitching. We are now ready to do some double hand stitching across the bits that we have just stitch marked. So we are going to start with two back stitches and we're going to finish with one and a half back stitches. That way both our ends are going to match. Now, when it comes to doing our back stitches, what we want is for the second stitch or the back stitch to sit either above or below, but not on top of our stitch that is underneath. So naturally, it's going to want to go one way or the other, but you can just guide that so it's going to sit above or below the original stitch with your needle. And that way it's going to look a lot neater than if it was on top of the stitch. Now we've done that, we can then tap the stitchings down with a hammer. So as you can see, I have a pair of wallet pockets here, and that's going to make sense for when we stick these together. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to trim along those lines that we have done our stitching on. And then we need to do some finishing touches to these because we're not going to be able to once the wallet has been stitched together. So if you have a very small, very fine edge groove, you can use that. Or if not, you can use a sanding block like what I am doing here and just round the edge of that so it's nice and smooth. And then because we have that lining or the fabric lining in between the layers here, what we're going to do is with a very hot crease, we're going to, just going to smooth down the fibers on the leather and that will melt any frizzy bits that have come out of the fabric. We can then do our creasing and we're going to crease across the two edges that we've cut. You can also crease along the top of your pockets. Now the crease I'm using here is 1.5 millimeters. Now what we're going to do is do our edge finishing. So depending on what you are using will depend on how many layers you need to do. The stuff that I'm using here is a bit of a hybrid. It's not a paint nor is it a stain. So I did end up doing about three or so layers of this to get it so it's nice and shiny. Once you've done that, we are now ready to glue our two pieces together. Now we want to make sure these are aligned correctly and so what we can do is actually with a needle in the corners where we marked uh, for our stitching earlier, we can actually put some needles through them to make sure everything is going to line up. So now everything is stuck down together, what we're going to do is stitch mark all the way through on the remaining two edges and I'm doing that on the side where I have the silver pen still. Now if your silver pen is already rubbed off, you can go ahead and just redraw that on to give you a nice guide to stitch to. And again, once we've done our stitch marking, we can then use some crepe rubber and just get rid of that silver line. And now we're going to go ahead and double hand stitch our wallet together. So I started with two back stitches and I'm going to finish with one and a half back stitches. And then an optional thing you can do is also to stitch over the edge of your wallet if you want to. It's not necessary and I didn't do it for this one, but you can do if you want to.
So what we're going to do now is flatten the stitching. Now I'm using some edge clamps for this or you can use your hammer. Either way is absolutely fine. One thing to note is if you do get some edge clamps is you're going to want to cover them in leather just to protect your work from the metal edges. Now once we've done that we can trim the final two edges of our case and I'm just going to nick the corners of mine. You don't have to if you don't want to but I quite like that look on my wallet. And then we're going to go back and do some finishing touches. So once again I'm going to round the edge of my work with some sandpaper. So I'm doing this over the edge of the bench just to make it a bit easier for myself. And once you're done sanding, use a hot creasing iron just to flatten down any fluffy bits and it will also melt down any bits of fraying fabric that are in between the layers. You can then use your creasing iron and crease on the edges. And then we're going to apply our edge finish. So like I said, this edge finish that I'm using is a bit of a hybrid. It's not really a paint nor a stain but I can build the layers up on it and I ended up doing I think three or four on these edges where there are lots of layers. Once you're done doing your edge finishing, you can then use your bone folder and push any excess glue out of the pockets. And then that is it. You can then start using your card wallet. So this one that I have made is the two pocket version. So it can easily hold four cards and then it has the open compartment for cash as well. So that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching and if you did, please click the thumbs up button and subscribe for more videos and tutorials and I shall see you in the next video.